As a student, when you are working in the lab, you need to know where the safety equipment is located so you can protect yourself. Welcome to Lab Safety Orientation. Meet Jimmy, every student. He'll be assisting us today as we discuss the importance of being prepared for any lab emergency. Say hello, Jimmy. We considered hiring Bob West, but decided he was too handsome for this role. Let's begin. Fires can escalate very quickly. Say, for instance, our friend Jimmy was to move the flame too close to that beaker of flammable liquid. Go on, Jimmy. It will be all right. See, fires can escalate very quickly. That's why it is so important to contact the fire department immediately, no matter the size of the fire. All you need to do is pull the fire alarm. You've initiated a pop quiz portion of this video. Turn your review books to page 64.3 and prepare to translate what you hear into French. Never a waste of time to pull the fire alarm. You pull the fire alarm, it instantly activates the fire department. It's a bell that starts ringing in the fire station. When that bell's ringing, the crews are gathering around the apparatus. They know that it's a campus box. They've got predetermined apparatus that they're pulling out. When that box is dispatched, they're already halfway down Bill's Road. One of the other critical components is make the phone call. Say, yes, I just pulled the box because I have a small fire in my lab and give the information. Identify yourself. There's no fine. There's no punitive action here, but what it allows us to do is the crews will go in with you and evaluate it and get your building and your lab back to normal as quickly as possible. Put down your pencils now and close your review books. If you are in a building and you hear the fire alarm, evacuate the building immediately. This is what the fire alarm sounds like. May I have your attention, please? The signal tone you have just heard indicated a report of an emergency in this building. Walk to the nearest stairway and leave this building. May I have Jimmy, your attention, please? Jimmy, you should be evacuating the, the building. Tone you have just heard indicated a report of an emergency in this building. Although it may feel silly, it is a good idea to walk your evacuation route at least once when you are in a new work environment. That way, during an actual emergency, there is no confusion. And remember to take the stairs. Do not use the elevator. Check with your PI or supervisor to find out your assembly point. Good job, Jimmy! When in the lab, accidents can happen at any time. Say, for instance, Jimmy accidentally gets some chemicals on his clothing. Oh dear, Jimmy. That vial is marked highly corrosive. You had better get to the safety shower immediately. The safety shower is your friend. It can be used to remove chemicals from your body and can also be used to put out fires. You should remove any clothing the chemicals have come in contact with. However, since Jimmy has quite an unsightly physique, we will ask that he refrain from that for the sake of the viewers. When the safety shower is pulled, an alarm will sound. It sounds like this. When you hear this alarm, it means someone needs help. If you can, please provide assistance. The safety shower will make a big mess. That is okay. A mess can be cleaned up. Your arm cannot be grown back. Wait a minute, Jimmy. What would happen if someone got chemicals in their eye? Ahem. I said... What if someone got chemicals in their eye, Jimmy? In this situation, you would use the eye wash station. 
The eye wash station is located right next to the safety shower. The eye wash station will also activate the alarm. Under normal circumstances, this will get the attention of someone who can come assist you. While Jimmy finishes washing out his eyes, let's look at some other things that could be useful in an emergency. Take your neighbor's review book, open to a page of your choosing, and prepare to be quizzed. A drench hose can be used for rinsing off small spills. Only attempt to use a fire extinguisher if you have been trained and feel comfortable using it. Otherwise, activate the fire alarm and evacuate, as Jimmy showed you earlier. Your lab may be equipped with spill kits for small spills. For spills of anything that is beyond your response capabilities, call dispatch at 874-2121. The final thing you should know about is a first aid kit. If you've been trained in first aid, use this. If medical attention is needed though, call dispatch at 874-2121. Jimmy! Good job, Jimmy! Jimmy, let's show everyone how the lab protects them and how they can protect themselves. These are safety glasses and gloves. Yes, Jimmy. They make you look like a geek, but you weren't getting any dates anyway. Perhaps if you'd been wearing your safety glasses earlier, you wouldn't have gotten chemicals in your eye. Make sure your gloves are compatible with the chemicals you are working with. Wearing a lab coat will reduce the exposure to chemicals, but for splash hazards you may need additional protection. If the potential for fire exists, choose a flame-resistant coat. Let's look at other things that protect us in the lab. Quickly turn to page 18, then to page 75. Follow the instructions on page 44. A fume hood. This provides protection from chemical exposures. It functions by maintaining a capture velocity of air across the face of the hood. An alarm will sound if the flow drops below 100 FPM. The alarm sounds like this. This is a respirator. Ugh. Although Jimmy is wearing it upside down. If you think that you need one, redesign your process so that you don't. The best way to protect yourself is with a fume hood or other mechanical exhaust. A biological safety cabinet, or BSC, is designed to keep biological materials contained. Air is circulated through a filter inside the hood. If you haven't finished sketching all of the examples, do it now. Oh, Jimmy, it looks like someone didn't dispose of some hazardous waste properly. Oh, what poor timing. If this were still the response portion of this video, I could tell you what to do. But for now, let's show everyone where they are supposed to put hazardous waste. Hazardous waste containers must be properly labeled, closed, and placed in secondary containment. This is the glass disposal box. Use this for disposal of non-recyclable glass. Seal, label, and carefully place in the dumpster. This is a biohazard and sharps container. Jimmy, could you place that very sharp object into the container for me? Whew. 
Well, look at that. You're learning quickly. Good job, Jimmy. Goodness, you're still an ugly man. Safety Orientation Checklist is available on the Environmental Health and Safety website. Walk through your lab or workspace and identify where safety and emergency equipment is located so that you are prepared in an emergency. Remember, in an emergency... Remember, in an emergency, call dispatch at 874-2121. The university's most important assets are its people, its students, staff, faculty, and guests. Protect yourself and those around you. And now for the small print. This video is designed to familiarize you with your surroundings. Additional training will be provided by your PI or instructor on how to properly use the equipment shown in this video. No students were actually harmed in the making of the video. We don't want you to be either.